I have done nothing wrong. I have broken no laws. I have provided no false information to Congress. I have violated no IRS rules. I have violated no IRS regulations. And then, Mr. Chairman, she authenticated a document. All of this, Mr. Chairman, after she invoked her right to remain silent. Nine separate factual assertions. All right. That, of course, uh, is Congressman Trey Gowdy, Republican from Tennessee. And uh, you should all be very familiar with that because then, Congressman, welcome to the show. Uh, great to talk to you again. And, of course, you were the one who... Who, who came up with that, uh, that uh, revelation, if you will, that, you know, Lois Lerner really has no right to, to, to continue to plead the fifth since she gave up that right in your view and in the view of uh, other legal uh, uh, minds. Uh, she, she, she forfeited that right. Yeah, even a blind hog fi finds an acorn every now and again. <laughs> uh, uh, but I still can't count. I went back uh, a couple weeks later, and she actually made 18 separate factual assertions. So uh, per normal, I was off by about 50 percent. Yeah, there's no way you can argue that she exercised her right to remain silent when she talked for 20 minutes. Yeah, well, And I even Alan Dershowitz, who, by the way, I bumped into at a, at a dinner, and, uh, and he said I was right, which made me – of course, reconsider my position. But nonetheless, uh, it's not a partisan issue when it comes to the law. You either waived or you didn't, and she waived. Yeah, she did waive. Well, the, the, today, of course, the House Ways and Means Committee uh, voted to refer uh, to the Justice Department uh, Lois Lerner for criminal action. Uh, we had uh, Congressman um, uh, Tim Griffin on earlier who said that there is substantial evidence that Lois Lerner is guilty of criminal activity. Um, and tomorrow, I believe your committee, the uh, House Oversight Committee, uh, in a separate action, will uh, recommend uh, and take a vote, I should say, uh, to hold Lois Lerner in contempt. So where are we in your view and what's going to happen uh, as we go forward? You know, I think what happened today was really big, and it was big for two reasons. By the way, Tim Griffin's a former U.S. attorney in Arkansas, yep. so he knows what he's talking about. Y you remember when the president said there's not a smidgen of criminality? Yeah, sure, to, to, uh, to a Bill O'Reilly, yeah. Right. So now you have the Ways and Means, which is one of the more widely respected committees in Congress, sending three separate potential criminal acts to the Department of Justice and a referral. The, the second issue I think that's important is this is validation of sorts for Daryl Issa because he's pilloried as, as this is just a political exercise and – there's nothing there, and you need to move on. Well, here's another committee of Congress totally separate from oversight, which not only has concluded mismanagement and misconduct, but potential criminality. It's a big deal. Yeah, no, it is. It is a very big deal. Unfortunately uh, for the country, um, you know, Eric Holder is uh, the uh, attorney general, and we've seen how he's operated in the past. We've seen him be contentious with uh, um, our friend here on the show, uh, Louis Gohmert, I'm sure a friend of yours, colleague of yours, yes, uh, and others, uh, to, you know, in the, during the, uh, the, the recent times he's appeared before Congress. And he's shown no impetus whatsoever to, uh, to take this seriously, has he? Uh, no, and and you know I, I mentioned to him yesterday because he he was asked uh, Jimmy Jordan asked him a question about this investigation and he said he couldn't comment on it, which actually is the right answer. If you are a federal prosecutor, you can't comment on a pending investigation, but that didn't keep the president from doing so. Uh, remember, he he was all more than happy to comment yep. and say that there was no criminality. Yep. So. If Eric Holder, there was another exchange between he and Louis Gomert. You know, Louis said, you know, it doesn't bother you that you were held in contempt. And Holder showed as much animation as I've ever seen him show. And he said, don't ever assume that. Don't, don't ever assume. I think it was wrong. I think it was unjust, unjust. But don't ever assume it didn't bother me. Well, this is a perfect opportunity for him to prove his law enforcement credentials and not his political credentials. He's got career prosecutors in that office that are neither Republican nor Democrat. You've got a committee of Congress called Ways and Means that sent three separate potential criminal violations. If you want to be taken seriously as a top law enforcement official in the country, you better handle this investigation in a way that generates public confidence. Now, yeah, no, I, I am so with you. But, uh, you know, they were, what Gomert and, uh, and Holder were talking about yesterday was, uh, the, the, yes, being held in contempt, but also uh, then uh, Gomert said, don't lecture me because uh, Holder claiming they already handed over, you know, everything that they needed on the, uh, the uh, Fast and Furious case. And, 
And, and Gomer said, you know, 200 Mexicans died and a federal agent died and uh, others uh, were injured and died. And, and you know, we, we don't have what we need. So, I mean, this t appears to be an attorney general and an administration that claims there are no scandals, uh, that claims there's no breaking of the law. There's no, like you said, not a smidgen in, uh, with regard to the IRS. Benghazi has been settled. That's all over, they say. So, I mean, I, I'm just not optimistic that you're going to get any cooperation from Eric Holder going forward. Here's what you and I are both optimistic about. Uh, November. November is the ultimate chance for our fellow citizens to say, you know what? We're not headed in the right direction, and you can pick your reason why. Our feckless foreign policy, health care, or maybe just maybe, since we're a nation of laws, it'd be nice to have a chief executive and an AG that took that responsibility Seriously. Now, you can't get rid of the chief executive this November, but you can certainly send a message that we're not happy with the way things are going. And I know Look, my, my wife hates it when I say elections have consequences. Uh, which why, is, why does she hate that? Well, because she's heard it 100 million <laughs> times. And I think at a certain point after 25 years of marriage, you just assume I've got that down. Right. But, but I want to play for the folks you getting a standing ovation uh, talking about exactly what you're talking about. Here's here's uh, cut 51. Everybody watch. Mr. Speaker, the House of Representatives does not exist to pass suggestions. We do not exist to pass ideas. We make law, and while you are free to stand and clap when any president comes into this hallowed chamber and promises to do it with or without you, I will never stand and clap when any president, no matter whether he's your party or mine, promises to make us a constitutional anomaly and an afterthought. We make law. I got to tell you, that is that is so right on target. And, and you know, you'd like to think, because you know it, Congressman, your wife knows it, I know it, uh, our, our viewers know it, that the, the president's running roughshod over the Constitution. But I just hope that the American people understand that as well. Well, if we get to the point where the end justifies the means, and, and so long as I agree with your policy, the manner in which you got there is irrelevant to me, then we really are finished. I, I mean, we we just are. That is not apocalyptic. We really are finished. If it doesn't matter whether you would enforce mandatory minimums, which I discussed with the attorney general yesterday, or the health care law, I mean, you know, people are talking about immigration. Some people think the immigration system needs to be reformed. What confidence do you have that any executive right. would enforce what's passed? Right. So it, it's serious, and I hope it's serious enough that people will put down – their Republican and Democrat credentials and pick up their American credentials and say, you know what, to whoever our president is, if you don't like the law, advocate to change it, but we expect you to enforce it. Absolutely. Congressman Trey Gowdy, a pleasure to talk to you, sir. I can't wait till the next time and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Congressman Trey Gowdy, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Um, he's He's something special. He really is. I mean, you know, we've seen him come and we've seen him go. We've talked to a lot of people and you know, we've seen them in action on their committees and uh, on the floor of the House and Senate. Uh, but uh, he knows what he's talking about. He absolutely knows the law. He knows what he's talking about. And he is so right on uh, Lois Lerner and the fact that she gave up her right to claim and, and invoke the Fifth Amendment once she started you know, going on and on and on, denying this, denying that, talking about that. 18 points, he now says. 18 or 19. Uh, I can't count either. I can't remember what he said. Um, anyway, when we come back, our friend Charles Hurt will be here. Remember a guy named Sharpton? Sharpton? Oh, yeah. We'll talk about him. Steve Malsberg Show. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malsberg Show. In